Cool. Hi guys, I'm James and this is uh, Susan. So tonight someone's going to win Susan and I hope she goes to a good home. Someone is going to look after her and uh, give, her some, give her the love she deserves. Um, before we decide who's going to win Susan, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about our company in Scotland and the beers we make. So. Half, half an hour? I was, I was thinking maybe two hours. <laughs> Doodog was set up in 2007. The company was set up by myself and my best friend Martin. And uh, we started making beers at home in 2005. Uh, we couldn't find any beers that we liked in Scotland, so we decided the best thing to do was to start making our own beers. So we'd spend our weekends in our garage, listening to punk music and, and making beers. And in 2006, we had the opportunity to meet Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, the famous beer and whiskey writer, as opposed to Michael Jackson, the pop star, which would have been uh, equally, equally exciting. So we, we met Michael Jackson down in London, and we actually let him taste one of the beers we'd been making at home. And for us, this was just an amazing experience to, to let Michael Jackson taste one of our beers. And we still have a photo of Martin and Michael Jackson in our office wall. So he, he tasted this beer we'd been making at home and we were in, in tender hooks. We're like, oh my God, it's Michael Jackson tasting one of our beers. And he mm -hmm. tasted it and just put the glass down slowly and says, guys, quit your jobs and, and start making beer. So we thought, what the hell, if Michael Jackson's saying that to us, uh, let's, uh, let's do it. So we're 24 years old at the time. Uh, we'd never ran a business, we'd never had staff, and we, we, we decided to set up our own business. So we, we went to the bank, and for some reason the bank gave us some, some money. We'd no business plan, nothing. We'd, uh, <laughs> we'd a shirt and tie on that day and a suit. I'm sure that's all we had going for us. But we'd, we'd got some money from the bank, we bought some second-hand stainless steel tanks, we uh, got a, a space, an industrial space that we could start making beer in. But we're just so happy to be making beer, and our biggest goal when we set up the company, and it's still our biggest goal to date, is just to make other people as passionate and excited about good beer, about good craft beer as we are. And where we're at in Scotland, it's a complete desert for good beer. The, the Scottish beer market is dominated by the monolithic, generic, multinational, faceless corporations and the kind of liquid, cardboard, laggers that they kind of spew out. And there's some small beer companies in the UK too, but they tend to be very old-fashioned and traditional. They have steam engines and sheep in their labels and the whole camera <laughs> thing is quite boring. So we wanted, to, we wanted to make punky, edgy beers and make other young people as excited about good beer as we are. So we've also got um, six of our beers on tap here tonight. 
we have the Divine Rebel Mortlich Deserve 2008. That's a beer we made in collaboration with McKellar, a barley wine that we aged in a Scottish whiskey cask for two years. There's only a tiny amount of it, so it's really good to have that one here. We have our Hardcore IPA, which is our double IPA, loaded with American hops, 100 IBUs, some Scottish malts. Our Punk IPA, we have Chaos Theory, Riptide, which is an Imperial Stout. We also have a beer which we've aged in Scottish whisky casks with uh, strawberries and, and raspberries. So a great selection of beers on here tonight. Um, because what we've done when we've set up our company, we've definitely caused a lot of controversy with beers such as Tactical Nuclear Penguin, Sink the Bismarck, and then obviously the, the end of history. But what we want to do is we just don't care what people think and we want to make beers like we want to make and have some fun with it. And only last week, Martin and I were down in England. Um, HSBC is a big bank in the UK and they organized a, a business competition. And because we've managed to develop our business a lot in the last couple of years, we were shortlisted for UK's best young business. So Martin and I got our suits on and we went down to London to, to, meet the, to meet the judging panel and there was like the head of Google from the UK, kind of high up people from the bank. There was also a feminist in the judging panel. So we were, uh, we got to speaking about our company and was telling them about the beers that we make. And yeah, so we've got a beer called Trashy Blonde and all of a sudden the feminist picks us up and she's just not happy. And to make matters worse, um, that edition of Trashy Blonde on the label made reference, perhaps ill-advisedly, to Save the Whale Lesbos. So she saw this and she, she, she was not happy. And Martin, Martin, Martin sitting next to me with his suit on, speaking about punk IPA and telling everyone about New Zealand hops. And she says, stop, guys, just stop. How can you, how can you come down here and tell us about your, your company, your beers and your plans when you're offending women, you're calling beers trashy blonde and you're offending lesbians? <laughs> I, I was about to answer, but Martin started speaking before him and he said, listen, love, which is, uh, <laughs> which is, which is, uh, which is, which is, which is never a, a great start. He said, uh, listen, love, I don't have anything against lesbians. In fact, I've got some DVDs at home just like <laughs> So, uh, so, so needless to say, we didn't win the business competition. But we got, uh, we got a, fun, a fun story out of it. So the 55% beer, the, the end of history with this, what we wanted to do, we wanted to make a beer that would challenge people's perceptions about what beer is, how it can be enjoyed, and how it can be packaged. And it's almost a, a statement about our disillusionment with the, with the beer market in the, in the UK. So we wanted to do something that was uh, just made people think about beers in a slightly different way and also combined beer, art, and, and taxidermy. It's something that caused a huge amount of a controversy, which I can, I can fully understand, but all the animals we used were roadkill. So we used 10 animals, and I think there's a huge distinction between this and something like the cosmetics industry that's feeding hundreds of thousands of animals. So this was, this was to make a statement and to, to celebrate these animals and to make a beer which no one else has ever made. So now, now we're going to decide, decide uh, which one of you guys gets to take uh, Susan, Susan home tonight. So uh, Yannick, if we shall. You just. Okay. So if anyone's got any questions about the beers we make in Scotland, stoats, squirrels, penguins, um, pretty much anything, I'm, I'm happy to talk to you guys about that. There's loads of information about what we do on our website. We've got videos and loads of cool stuff going on there. But thanks so much for coming out and, and tasting the beers. And this is the best part of what I get to do. Without people tasting our beers and getting excited about our beers, we wouldn't have a business at all. So thanks again for drinking the beers that we make in Scotland. And, uh, have a good day.